Um, the vagus nerve is a nerve that um, is really what shifts us in and out of stress states, right? And we've, uh, vagus nerve is a buzzword right now. And Stephen Porges uh, is a scientist who really discovered that there are actually two branches to the vagus nerve. And what's kind of interesting is that actually they could really be given different names. They emerge out of different parts of the brain. They follow different pathways and they have very different effects on our organs and our muscles and our systems. Really, they could be given different names, but they're linked. And so we used to think that there was kind of two states. We could be in fight or flight, or we could be in rest and digest. And the way I was taught early in my career was like, you know, you're either in a relaxed state or you're in a stressed out state. And that's kind of true. It's a good beginning. But what the polyvagal theory kind of does is helps us to understand that there really is that third state, which has been called freeze. But it's really a completely different activation of the nervous system from a completely different nerve. <laughs> it's in the dorsal, um, which means in the back of the body um, portion of the vagus nerve. And then the ventral portion of the vagus nerve is that calm, happy place, right? So there's actually three states of our autonomic nervous system or our emotional regulation system. Um, and the first state is ventral. This is the state that we're all looking for. It's also called the social engagement system. And the ventral vagus is, is that happy place. You're calm, you're, you can experience joy with others, you co-regulate well with your people, you're pretty happy, you can navigate things easily, you're feeling good, right? Ventral vagal is like, ah, oh, awesome, right? And then the way it's often explained is that there's kind of a, like a ladder of activation of the nervous system. And so the top of the ladder is ventral vagal. This is like the top of the mountain. We're like, yes, I'm happy. I have friends. I feel welcome. I feel safe. That feeling safe is a key piece. Okay. Then if we step down the ladder, we get a stressor gets introduced into the system. And that could be the baby's screaming in the middle of the night. You heard a loud sound in the night. Someone's coming after you, or you have to pay the bills, or you've got to get make this light so that you can get on the road so that you can get to work on time, whatever the stressor is. That can shift us out of the va ventral vagal into sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system is is mobilizing that's its job is to get you moving okay so your heart rate increases your breath in rate increases blood pressure increases your your digestive function those other functions in your organs begins to shut down and this is often called the mobilization with fear there's, a, there's an element of fear or worry or concern. That's why you're there in the first place, right? Something, a stressor. So you're moving. This is what causes muscular tension in your body. Your muscles get activated so that you can punch or run like hell, okay? So that's sympathetic nervous system activation. And this is what we often think of when we think about being stressed, right? We're in that sympathetic nervous system response. It's a movement, it's a, it's a tension, it's a tightness, it's anxiety. Now, at some point, the stressors may become so overwhelming to the nervous system and your nervous system goes, I can't get out of this. There's no way out. I can't fight my way and I can't um, run away. So the nervous system will then go into dorsal vagal activation, which is like shock and shutdown. So when we get when we move down the ladder into the dorsal vagus nerve, okay, back body, we can become dissociated. We can black out, faint, or kind of disappear. And so 
what's happening is the nervous system feels so overwhelmed by the stress that we shut down. And those elements of shutdown are those fainting, blacking out, not being able to see sometimes, not being able to hear, things start withdrawing. We withdraw, trying to go find a happy place. And we might create a little happy place in our minds so that we feel safe, so that we don't have to actually experience the intense experience that's happening. Does that make sense, right? So ventral vagal is the true happy place. We're good, we're socially engaged. Stressor comes in, sympathetic nervous system activation is like, oh, I gotta get out of here, or I'm gonna have to fight my way out, or I'm gonna have to run, right? And then if that stressor is so overwhelming to the system and you, you can't see, your nervous system can't identify a way out, you'll go into dorsal activation, which is that fainting or um, dissociation. Does that all make sense? So that's in, in essence what polyvagal theory is. It's like actually there's there's two states that when we can get into a stressor, there's there's actually two directions we can go. And sometimes something is so overwhelming that we immediately go into kind of blacking out or shutting down or just like disappearing, trying to disappear. And and then ultimately that can lead to if we can become if someone has chronic uh, traumas or stressors and they're they're kind of they've had to withdraw, that sort of tendency to withdraw can lead to apathy, hopelessness, helplessness, and chronic states of depression. A chronic sort of sympathetic nervous system activation being stuck in that state leads to extreme straight states of stress, anxiety, and panic disorder. So, and often the self-regulation skills that we learn and that I'm teaching you in this class are really to get us out of that sympathetic activation back to ventral. Like, what do I need to do to get to feel good? If you're in that dorsal like thing, right? What you actually have to do is kind of get moving a little bit. It's why people who are depressed have a lot of feel better when they exercise, but they have no motivation to exercise. They don't want to do anything. They just want to sit there and be apathetic and be helpless and hopeless. They don't want that. But that's the what the nervous system is telling them. Does that make sense also? Mm -hmm. So it's why people who are depressed truly clinically depressed have a really hard time getting motivated because they're stuck in that dorsal branch of the vagus nerve. So actually the, to climb out of depression, literally up that vagal ladder, they need stimulation. They have to be stimulated into a sympathetic activation to get back to the ventral. Okay, so that's why body work, body awareness, movement is so important. Um, Melissa, would you just lock that door right there? Thank you. So um, what's interesting is that um, we might have a tendency to want to say, okay, it's either one or the other or the other. Right? We're either in, in our happy place or we're stressed out or we're in sympathetic or we're in dorsal, right? There's kind of three basic landing states of the autonomic nervous system. Well, the fact is that there are also hybrid states just to make it more interesting. <clears throat> and so in a hybrid state, there's an activation of the sympathetic nervous system and the ventral vagal, which seems contradictory, but this is the kind of state we experience with playful competition. Right. If you're in a game and everyone agrees to the rules and you feel safe within that, you can get really amped up, right? You can like go to your best, push yourself, strive, run, kick, do all the things that requires sympathetic activation. So sympathetic activation is not always stress. It can also be healthy competition. 
And it needs to be balanced by the ventral vagal. So both can be activated at the same time, which is why knowing that, understanding that there can be a little activation of sympathetic response and, and some activation of the ventral vagus nerve helps us to understand why we aren't completely overwhelmed every time a little stressor happens, right? We can get like a little bit of stress chemistry, a little bit of sympathetic activation, but still feel pretty safe, right? Like kind of like when you're trying to avoid pedestrians driving through Asheville, right? You're just like, whoa, hey, why are you walking and looking at your phone and crossing the street at the same time? But you're sitting with your friend and you're still happy and everything's okay, but you get a little bit of a squirt, right? So healthy competition requires a little bit of sympathetic activation, a little bit of ventral activation. Healthy intimacy, deep states of intimacy with others, like cuddling with your partner, where you need to be, you need and want to be kind of immobile, requires some dorsal activation and ventral activation. See, they're not mutually ex exclusive. So in deep states of intimacy, the dorsal vagus nerve is activated. So that's the immobilization part. And the ventral vagus nerve is activated. That's the connection part. So, so there's those two hybrid states also, that kind of healthy competition, which is mobilization without fear. So the, uh, we have the ventral vagal, which is the happy place, which is kind of what we're all going for, social engagement system. Then we have the mobilization with fear, which is the classic understanding of sympathetic nervous systems, classic like, I'm getting the hell out of here. Then we have immobilization with fear, which is dorsal vagus, which is like, oh my God, that's too much. It's too much, I can't stand it. Which is why some people pass out maybe before you would, <laughs> you know? Sometimes you're like, wow, they're really like gone, you know? And then there's mobilization without fear, the hybrid state of sympathetic and ventral. And then there's immobilization without fear which is dorsal and ventral activated together, which is deep states of intimacy where you can just lay with your partner or your snuggly for hours. And it might be the middle of the day. Normally you'd be trucking around your day, right? But you could lay there for hours because you're in that deep intimate connection state. You're, so, you're engaged with them, socially engagement, social engagement, but you're also kind of immobile. You're just like, oh my God, this feels so good. Right? So the way that this, this is how this kind of plays out in our lives, right? Polyvagal theory really helps us to understand more about why people, when they're in sympathetic nervous system, they, they can't, or nervous system engagement, they can't engage well, right? And remember that story I told the first week about this woman who like, flipped her lid <laughs> when, when I said, you know, I don't think this class is right for you, right? She flipped out of her social engagement system, went right into sympathetic activation and became hypervigilant and was looking for ways for me to be threatening to her. And so that's how our sympathetic nervous system gets overprotective. And then um, when we're in um that depression state understanding that we actually need to like give get a little juice we got to get moving and get going or else we'll just keep sinking down into the dark tunnel okay and and that's kind of the way often people with depression will explain it is like i'm just i can't move i can't move i have no motivation i'm i'm stuck so I think it's helpful to understand that because a sympathetic activation, right, is excitement, right? Excitement is that healthy competition phase, right? And then, but anxiety is that mobilization with fear. And so really these practices that you're learning here are really about getting you into a balanced state 
with a sympathetic nervous system activation, perhaps, or taking out that stress chemistry and getting you back into your ventral vagus branch. And that really to, to, you wouldn't be here. Like I can't necessarily sit here and tell you, like I could tell you if you're in dorsal, get moving, you know, but that's not like, that's why people often need real helpers in their lives. If they have a tendency to go into that dorsal branch, because in sympathetic nervous system, you're still motivated, right? So you can go, oh, I can become aware and I can fix this and I can take care of this, right? In dorsal, you're not motivated. And so I can't necessarily just hand you the tools to get you out of that state. The best thing I could do is say, go run, right? If you're feeling depressed and you're feeling sad and, and like, you're, like you're fading away. But to notice like the key last week in the, in the class, I said, I explained the flipping the lid. And when you flip your lid, you've got those two branches of the vagus nerve to, to like your nervous system is gonna decide like how much have I flipped my lid <laughs> and how much do I need? Do I just need to get away a little bit or has it become so overwhelming that I need to disappear, right? So it's like happy place, maybe need to get away a little bit or change my surroundings or I need to disappear because this, this shit's crazy, okay? So these practices that what I said last week is like, it's a willingness to see when you're out of ventral vagal. I said, when you're out of your zone, right? But it's really when you're out of ventral vagal. So part of the understanding what polyvagal theory helps us understand is that that ventral vagal system is social connection, which is why you can see me smile today, right? Because it helps you to feel better when you can see people smile, highly recommend you get these kind of masks <laughs> because it, it's like, oh, okay. You know, if I'm just sitting here and I'm not moving and I look like this within seconds, your nervous system is going to start freaking out literally because immobility is like a sign of danger. Right. But if I start moving my head and whatever, oh, all of a sudden your nervous system feels better. There's all these little triggers. <clears throat> So what I said in last week's class was that you have to be first willing to notice, right? So in that, in that story about the woman who freaked out when she didn't feel welcome in my class, she, she's not willing, wasn't at the time willing to see that actually she was the one who was in sympathetic nervous system response. So the first step is willingness that so that you can be aware because once you're willing, you're like, Oh, let me notice when I'm out of my zone, starting to flip my lid, then you can be aware. And then when you're aware, then you can add in some of these tools like, oh, I'm going to take Dwimukha Mudra and I'm going to do a long, slow exhale and I'm going to feel and I'm going to take care of myself. And, and some, so some of the symptoms that you're out of your zone might be that you're mad at everybody, like everybody because your social engagement system has kind of shut down, you're in sympathetic branch, you're looking for danger. So it might be that everyone is pissing you off. If everyone is pissing you off, off the common denominator is you, okay? So it's like, okay, maybe I need to go on retreat for a couple of days and reset my nervous system in a very deep way, right? Um, so the skills and tools that you're learning are about will only serve you if you're willing and if you're will, if you're willing to be aware. And then if you're willing to then you go, got to use the tools right and so the tools are the self regulation practices, which is yoga, which is mudra which is chanting which is dancing dancing's great self regulation tool. Um, which is often accompanied by some movement to process that stress chemistry, that little bit of cortisol and 1200 other things, so that you can tuck that amygdala back in and go, it's all right, baby, we're safe, we're safe, it's okay. And so that sense of safety, building and constructing a sense of safety around yourself is one of the foundations 
of being in ventral vagus. Okay, so part of what we're going to do last week, our meditation was like connecting with the crown chakra. And so now we're going to use that meditation, we're going to go deeper into that and really create a bubble of safety around ourselves to foster that sense of safety. Because remember, the triggers into sympathetic or dorsal are, are, are accompanied with fear in, in stressful conditions. So it's ultimately, it comes down to your nervous system doesn't feel safe. I really want you to hear that it's your nervous system that doesn't feel safe. It's not you that doesn't feel safe. Right, so you can go, oh, my nervous system is kind of freaking out and I'm mad at everybody. I'm gonna go for a walk and I'm gonna say to myself, I'm safe. It's okay. For some reason you don't feel safe and it could be socially or physically. And so to really keep fostering and letting yourself know I'm safe right now in this moment, I'm safe and start wooing your nervous system out of that sympathetic response back to ventral vagal. So that maybe helps you have a little visual. And then if you start really like going down the hill and start withdraw, feeling yourself withdraw or getting sad or depressed, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna stimulate. So I can climb back up that ladder, get into a little, you need that sympathetic activation so that you can climb back up to the happy place. It is the top of the mountain. <laughs> Your happy place is the top of the mountain. And you can help create that in yourself. You have to, you have to create it for yourself. No one can do your self care for you, right? Okay. So that's what we, is that helpful to like get that understanding of polyvagal theory? Cause you've all heard of it, right? You're like, oh yeah, polyvagal theory. I have no idea what that really means, right? So I hope that you find that useful. So for the rest of our time, we're going to just do practice. And um, I'm going to remind you that khaki pranayama is that um, long, slow exhale. I think I called it also cooling the soup breath or the um, gently blowing on the candle without blowing it out, right? Because science tells us that the natural state of breath is low in the belly and a twice, twice the, the exhale is twice the length of the inhale in general. Like that's a, that's ventral vagal breathing right there. And so with khaki pranayama, that long, slow exhale, we can really get that, that, uh, long, that back part into our ventral vagal, excuse me. We're going to add a layer to that breathing. So first let's just do three khaki pranayam breaths and you can take either adhi mudra or you can take dwi mukha mudra like we learned last week which was tips of the pinkies and tips of the ring fingers together either way just coming down um, relaxing the hands and doing that cooling the soup breath where you inhale through your nose into the belly and as you exhale purse your lips and Blow as if you're you're blowing on a candle, but you're just trying to make that flame flicker and not blow it out. And just do that a few times. And if it's helpful to you, you can count your inhale and then just blow the exhale twice as long. And then relax everything. And just notice how you feel. And then we're going to add a layer to khaki pranayam, where if you're really in like a stressed state, there's been stress stacking maybe for days or months, or you're in a chronically stressful situation that you can't really leave, like 
a, a job that you have to keep for now or a relationship that you have to work to get out of. And there's like a lot of sympathetic activation. Bringing more sensation into your body is really helpful to kind of like bring yourself into ventral vagal. So you can lay your hand on your face. You can touch your head. It's why um, this, the lips are very sensitive. So it's often why people, when they're scared, touch their lips, right? So you could lay your hand on your face and just kind of feel that. And then if you're not wearing a mask, you can put your palm in front of you and you can blow your air into the palm of your hand. Those of you who are here, you just have to imagine, okay? So you can lay your hand on your face, do a couple of breaths like that, like just feeling sensation, or you could even just run your fingers, your thumb across the tips of your fingers, like very softly to bring more sensation into your body. And that helps to land the body more in the present moment. We'll do one more breath here. And after that exhale, relax your hands, perhaps back to a mudra, sit up tall and well. And I want you to just say to yourself several times internally, I am safe. 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 Oh. All right, friends. Let's stand up and do some physical yoga to process out some adrenaline out of our bodies. Uh